A precipitation reaction is one in which we combine two aqueous reactants. Remember, aqueous just means that it's some sort of compound that's been dissolved in water. And those two aqueous reactants mix together and produce a product that is solid, does not dissolve in water. This solid product we refer to as the precipitate. And these reactions produce a second product as well. That second product is usually an aqueous product, although occasionally it could be a, a liquid instead of aqueous. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to predict the products of precipitation reactions. And we're gonna be using this as our example. So a question might be um, for this particular precipitation reaction, predict the products of the reaction. When you're being asked to predict the products of a precipitation reaction, the first thing that you should do is separate each one of the reactants into cations and anions. Now this is gonna require you to remember a few things that we've learned earlier. One thing that you're gonna be required to remember is the standard charges on our ions. So if we go to a periodic table, just as a reminder, the ions that are in the first column, these all have plus one charges, these ones have plus two charges, these have plus three charges, and then we have go minus three, minus two, and minus one. So we're gonna to wanna to remember that. And another thing that you're going to want to remember from a previous lesson is the formulas of polyatomic ions. And here are the most common polyatomic ions. These were the ones that I gave you quite a while ago, but we may occasionally see some polyatomic ions that are not on this list. We wanna be able to recognize them when we see them. So um, the, like I said, the first task is to separate these compounds into cations and anions. Remember that in the formulas, the cations are always written first. So for BaCl2, the cation is the barium ion. And if I were to flip back to the periodic table, I would see that that barium ion has a two plus charge. And that barium ion is still in the aqueous state because it's still dissolved in water. Our anion, which is second, is the chloride ion. Now this is something that confuses some students. Some students want to write the formula of the chloride ion like this. They see that two right here, and they just wanna keep that whole thing as an entire unit. They want you to not fall into that trap with a standard ion like chloride. So anything that is just one of these ions from the periodic table, they never exist as Cl2 or Br2 or I2 or Na2 or Ca3 or any other combination. So if you see the two here, this means that you have two of those chloride ions, not that you have a Cl2 ion. For our second compound, we have sodium sulfate. Here again is another one of those twos. When you see that two associated with sodium, you know that it's not Na2, it's 2Na. These chemicals, these particular types of ions, they're not polyatomic. So Na plus, aqueous, and then our anion is the sulfate polyatomic ion SO42 minus which is something that you would see um, just if you had forgotten about it. It's on our list of polyatomic ions. And like I said, for most students, this step right here is definitely going to be the trickiest step because we haven't practiced any of this type of stuff for a while, but once you do it for a while, it'll come back to your brain. So once we get everything separated into the cations and anions, we are going to use those ions to create our products which are going to be new compounds, new and exciting compounds. So what I mean by that is that we're gonna take the barium ion and we're gonna combine it to, with something to make something new and exciting. So the barium ion, we don't wanna combine it with the chloride ion only because that doesn't create a new compound. That would just create BaCl2 again, which is not new for this particular reaction. 
So instead of combining the barium with the chloride, could we combine it with sodium? Would that be an option? In this case, no, it's not because we cannot combine two cations together. We have to put a positively charged ion with a negatively charged ion. So combining barium with sodium is not an option, which means our only option is to combine the barium ion with the sulfate ion. So we're gonna put these two ions together and create a new compound. In order to do this, we do have to pay attention to the charges of the ions. Since barium is two plus and sulfate is two minus, these two ions are gonna to come together in a one-to-one -one ratio, and we're going to make BASO4. Now, in terms of what state this is in, we do not know. BASO4 might be our solid precipitate, or it might be our aqueous other product. This is something that we're going to have to check. So we don't know the state yet. We'll just go ahead and um, not have anything written there. And our second compound that we're going to create, this comes from, we've already used the barium and the sulfate. So our second compound is going to come from combining the chloride ion with the sodium ion. These are also um, equal charges, so a minus one with a plus one, which means it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And don't forget that we always put the cation first and the anion second. So notice that there is stoichiometry up here, and I'm not following or carrying the stoichiometry through at this time, but that's okay. We're going to, we're going to fix that later. Right now, we're just interested in getting the formulas of these new compounds. And the last thing that we need to do is check what we call the solubility rules. We're going to use the solubility rules to determine if our products that we just picked in step two to determine if our products are solid or aqueous. Now there's a few different versions of solubility rules out there and a lot of them look really different from each other but they all give the same information. So um, the solubility rules that I'm going to be using in this video are ones that are set up in a table like this. And to use a set of solubility rules like this, you just simply find the two components of your compound. So let's say, let's say um, one of the compounds that we have, I remember, is NaCl. So to use these solubility rules for NaCl, first we find the cation, which is sodium right here, and then we find the anion, which is chloride right here, and we see where they come together on this table, and then you see that there is either a yes or a no. Yes on this particular table means that yes, it is soluble in water, so on this particular type of table, a yes means that it is soluble in water, and a no means that it is not soluble in water, which means that it is a solid. And you'll see that some of these don't have any data at all because they're just impossible combinations. They're ions that just can't be combined together, so these would be compounds that don't actually exist. So we already know, um, we've already looked up one of our products, NaCl, which we know that that is soluble in water. So let's go ahead and go back and write that information down. Um, NaCl is aqueous. Now you might be thinking, oh, since I know that NaCl is aqueous, that must mean that barium sulfate is our solid. Now don't make that assumption. There will be times when you're just kind of tricked in a situation where both of the products of the reaction are aqueous. So we're gonna come across examples like that. And because of that, you should always double check to make sure that your, um, both of your products are not aqueous. So let's go back to the solubility rules and let's look for BASO4 and see what it is. Um, first we find our barium, which is right here. And now we are looking for the sulfate ion, which looks like I'm gonna have to scroll a bit. Here it is, and we see that this is a no, so that means that BASO4 is not soluble in water, it is our solid. BASO4 is a solid. So we have successfully predicted the products of this particular reaction. Once we get the products of a reaction predicted, there are three different ways that we could communicate the products of a precipitation reaction. One method is called writing a molecular equation. A molecular equation is one that shows all of the reactants and products as neutral ionic compounds. So a molecular equation would look like this, BACL2, and don't forget that we do wanna always include those states, aqueous, 
plus Na2SO4 aqueous. And the products of the reaction, which we determined were, I'm going to write this one first, BASO4 solid and 2 NaCl aqueous. Remember I told you that we had not yet balanced when we were dealing with up, the stuff up here. We didn't balance it, but we'd fix that later. So here is where I just came through and dealt with balancing that equation to make sure that we had the right number of sodium and chloride on both sides of the equation. This, again, this is the molecular equation. So this shows everything. And it shows everything as compounds, no ions. Now, another version, uh, another way that we could express a precipitation reaction is with an ionic equation. And the ionic equation will look like this. Everything that is aqueous is going to be separated in written as cation or anion. And this time we are going to include that stoichiometry all the way through. So the barium and the chloride, because it's aqueous, I'm writing it as a cation and anion. And the sodium sulfite, sulfate, because it's aqueous, I'm also writing as cation and anion. And then for the products, the barium sulfate, because it's a solid, not aqueous, I'm going to write that as a solid. Actually, I'm going to move that over a little bit, give myself some more room. BASO4, solid. And then the sodium ions and the chloride ions, because they are aqueous, I'm going to write them as cations and anions. So again, the molecular equation, this is one that shows the aqueous compounds as ions. The last way that we have to write a precipitation reaction is called the net ionic equation. And in the net ionic equation, we just simplify the ionic equation. So in the net ionic equation, we go through and find every single ion that's present on the left side as well as the right side in the exact same form, and we just remove them completely. So the barium ion is present on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, barium is not written as an ion. It's written as a molecule. So that means we're not going to eliminate the barium ion. So we'll leave that Ba2+. The chloride ion, written as an ion on the left, also written as an ion on the right, that's going to be eliminated from the net ionic equation. Sodium, written as an ion on the left and the right, eliminated. Sulfate, only as an ion on the left side, not on the right side. So we'll write that one out. And our product, BaSO4, as a solid. So the net ionic equation, again, this one omits cations and anions that are on both sides of the equation. So two, or excuse me, three methods for writing the precipitation reaction. In the next couple of videos, I'm just going to give you three more examples of going through the process of predicting the products of a precipitation reaction and writing these three different types of equations for that reaction.